Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about a TOEFL essay that would score about 22 points. I should mention that this is an essay that was written by one of my students and if you want to get your essay evaluated and scored in the same way, you can sign up at the link in the video description. Now, I also want to mention that this essay was written by the same student who I featured in my video last week. Last week, she got about 20 points, so this one is better than that essay. And in the video, I want to talk about what she did better and what she needs to improve next time. Um, let's start, I guess, by talking about the question. This is, of course, an agree-disagree style question. And it asks if you agree or disagree with the following statement. It is better to relax by watching a movie or reading a book than doing physical exercise. And of course, you need to explain your answer with examples and specific reasons. This is one of the three main styles of independent essay questions. Now, before I start talking about the content of this essay, I do need to skip all the way down to my final comment. And that is that the essay is too long. I recommended last time that she write between 380 and 400 words. She went ahead and wrote 465 words. Now, there's no penalty for word count. You can write as much as you want. But the problem is, if you're working too fast and you're trying to write too much, you're going to make more grammar mistakes. And that is going to lower your score. I find for most students, 400 words is usually about the limit to how much they can write in 30 minutes without making a ton of mistakes. So keep that in mind. Actually, I asked the student directly, why did you ignore my suggestion and write so much? And her response was, well, I didn't know how much I was writing. There's no word count on the screen. Well, basically, you've got to turn on that word count or you've got to click the word count button now and then to keep track of how much you're writing. When you're at the test center, there will be a word counter on the screen as you write. Please use it. All right, let's start going line by line through the essay, starting with the introduction. Now, she started with a hook, like I asked for. The hook is a general introduction to the theme or the topic of the essay before the main thesis statement. Her hook is okay. She's talking about how it's essential to have some time to relax because human brains cannot work without a break. And that taking a rest increases the efficiency of our brains. That's a pretty good general hook. Now, my suggestion in the template is a shorter hook. I just want one sentence from her next time. Again, her essay's too long, and she wants to know what parts she should make shorter. Well, my first suggestion, just one sentence before you state your thesis. That's all. A couple grammar mistakes here, a couple vocabulary suggestions. Uh, I want to draw your attention to this one. This is a common mistake. Generally, we use one word cannot instead of can not. There are exceptions to that, and I gave her a link to a, a grammar lesson which explains the exceptions. But generally, just use one word cannot instead of two words. Now, I already made a suggestion about her vocabulary. Uh, she's two sentences in and she's repeated the word brain two times. That's not good. That's not, a good uh, that's not a good sign. So again, I suggest that she avoid using the word brain again. After that, she gave her thesis. I believe that physical exercise is a better way to relax than watching a movie. I did make a suggestion about her word choice that she should not treat relax as a noun. It's always a verb. That's a common uh, mistake I see in a lot of essays. These videos, I don't really want to turn them into grammar lessons, but, you know, keep that in mind. Now, there is a problem with her thesis. 
in that she put her transitional sentence right into the thesis statement. I don't want your thesis to end with the phrase, I feel this way for two reasons, which I will explain in the following essay. That part should be a separate sentence. That part should be the final sentence of the introduction. So overall, your introduction should be three sentences. A hook, thesis statement, and that transitional statement. In terms of uh, grammar um, or punctuation, uh, don't use digits for numbers less than 11. Use words. I want to see TWO2. I don't want to see the digit 2. That's especially true for numbers less than 11. All right, so um, then she begins her first body paragraph. That was pretty good. Um, she starts with a topic sentence uh, that summarizes the argument in the, in the rest of the paragraph. First of all, most people work indoors and want to have a break from mental work. It's pretty good. I corrected her grammar here. And I also suggested that she avoid repeating the word work. Um, I think that's the third time she's used the word work. That's a problem because I don't want the same word to come up more than three times in the entire essay. So keep that in mind for your vocabulary. You don't have to use fancy words. You don't really have to use advanced words or difficult words. You just need to use a variety of words. That's so much more important than using complicated words. And it's also a lot easier. So again, when she gets to the next sentence, she uses mental work. And that's the exact same phrase she used in the topic sentence. That's a bit of a problem. So continuing on, she's writing some explanatory sentences, and that's what I want to see. The body paragraphs begin with the topic sentence, which state your argument, and then it continues with some explanatory sentences that elaborate on that. And she's doing that, and that's great. However, she just used the word brain again. I think that's the fourth time I've seen the word brain in this essay. That's a problem. Here's the next sentence. She used on the other hand. That's a great transitional phrase. I love that. Keep using that. Eh, but then she used the word work again. And then she used the word brain again. So you can see the problem with her vocabulary choices. All right. After the explanation, she gets to her personal example. When I was preparing for graduate school, well, She's missing a couple things at the beginning of this introduction. First of all, she needs a transitional phrase before the personal example begins. Now, the easiest transitional phrase is simply to say, for example, for instance. But if she goes back to the template I linked to, she can see my suggestion, which is a whole sentence. And it goes something like, my personal experience is a compelling example of this. That lets the grader know that you're just about to begin the personal example. And now the other slightly more advanced technique that I'm recommending to her is that after the transition, she begins the example by establishing the setting. That is, when it took place. So in my comment, I'm just saying to her, Begin with the phrase last year. So last year, when I was preparing for a graduate school entrance exam, or 10 years ago, when I was preparing for a graduate school entrance exam, and you can use phrases like this in almost all of your personal examples. Like 10 years ago, I moved to the countryside. And then you give that example about living in the countryside. Or, two months ago, I had to work on a group project at school. And then you give the whole example about working in the group project. 
I find that establishing the setting, uh, it improves your vocabulary. It makes your example sound more natural. And it's just a little bit more sophisticated and advanced. So give it a shot. Okay, so she continues the example. She's talking about how she spent time at the library and how she took a break every 10 minutes to relax. And again, I want to see the word 10 rather than the digit 10. She said the reading was fun, but she still felt tired and exhausted. Now, another rule that I always firmly enforce. Don't start a sentence with so. Use something like as a result instead of that. Don't start a sentence with but. Use something like however. Don't start a sentence with and. Use something like in addition. I don't want you starting sentences with coordinating conjunctions. Grammatically, that's okay often, but apparently the TOEFL rating software may punish you if you do that too often. Frankly, maybe one time is okay, but it's dangerous. So my rule is just never. All right, so moving on, um, she continues her personal example. And, uh, and then she wraps it up. And that's it, you know. She tells a little story from her life. She tried reading comics, but it didn't help. But she learned that taking a walk and getting some exercise was a better way to rest. That matches her topic sentence. And it matches her overall thesis. And that's all you do in a body paragraph. But to repeat, start with the topic sentence that summarizes your argument. You continue with some explanatory sentences that give more information. You have a transition that indicates you're going to give a personal example. And then you give a personal example. That's all you need. Now, you could uh, repeat the argument at the very end of the paragraph. That's simply optional. You can do it. You don't have to. That's all you need. Okay, moving on to her second body paragraph. Starts out with a topic sentence that um, summarizes her argument. She says, secondly, physical activities are good for not just our physical health, but our mental health. Nice argument. I had to clean up the grammar and the word choice a little bit, but it's still pretty good. And then she, uh, you know, she elaborates on that a little bit in a couple of sentences. She has a grammar mistake. She kind of gets mixed up between the present continuous and the present simple tense. I fixed that and I gave her a link um, that explains the grammar point a little bit. People often ask me, uh, so I've got my grammar book. Um, what should I, what should I study? It's so big. Well, you know, my... Biggest suggestion is, well, make sure you got your tenses right. Make sure you know how to use the present continuous tense. Make sure you know how to use the present simple tense. Good place to start. Really, focus in on the sections of your grammar book that talk about verb tense. All right, so she continues along and she gives some explanatory stuff about that um, argument. And, uh, you know, again, the grammar is, is weak. And that's the main reason why she's getting only 22 points. But I can still understand everything she wants to say. It's not impossible for me to understand, but there are mistakes, and that's costing her points. Of course, that is her biggest concern. Now, I did make another suggestion about length here. I said next time she should shorten the explanatory part of the paragraph down to just two sentences. So I think she's got three, maybe four sentences of explanation. My suggestion is just two sentences. As I said, her essay is too long and she needs to shorten stuff. So that's one part she can shorten. My general suggestion is that the personal example makes up about 60% of the paragraph. Now, the reason I suggest that 
is that the personal example is usually easier to write. If you focus on the example, you'll probably make fewer mistakes. So why not do that? You know, that, and that shouldn't be a surprise. Everyone knows it's easier to write about themselves. You've probably had a lot of practice doing that in your classes. So focus on your strengths, which is writing about yourself. Now, once again, she's lacking a transition before the personal example. She says, um, when we go somewhere else to exercise, it helps empty our head and focus on our body. When I feel stressed out, I go to a lake near my house and walk around it. Well, yeah, but she needs to say, for instance, when I feel stressed out, I go to a lake near my house. Or for example, when I feel stressed out, I want a sign. I want a clear sign that the personal example is beginning. That is something that the graders are looking for. They want transitions. They want flow. They don't just want a jumble of sentences. Uh, next up, she's got a very critical grammar point. She's got a, a sentence fragment. Um, it's because she started the sentence with because and it lacks a main clause. Now, uh, again, I don't want to turn this into a grammar lesson, but this is quite important. Now, it's okay to start a sentence with because. So you could say, because I ate a hamburger, I feel really bloated. But you can't just say, because I ate a hamburger. That's what she did here. The sentence lacks a main clause. And I gave her a grammar link that she can study from. Sentence fragments are really, really, really going to hurt your score on the test. But you can't leave any of them in. All right. Now, uh, I also concluded here with another bit that she could delete. So after she told me about her personal example, she wanted to give a little bit extra. And she said, I remember many stories of how famous scientists or scholars came up with important inventions while they were taking a shower or taking a walk. Yeah, delete that. Um, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to give a second example to support your argument. Talk about yourself and then end the paragraph. This is just bonus. It's too much. It hurts the flow. And again, she needs things to delete, right? There are things that made her essay too long. Um, and then to end, um, she kind of repeated her topic sentence, right? From the beginning of the paragraph. She said, I believe that physical activity stimulates our brain in a pleasant way and makes it more efficient. Now, in, uh, in this case, I suggested that she use the word therefore. Change that to therefore. I believe that physical activity stimulates our brain, blah, blah, blah. You know, I found this essay was a little bit short on these discourse phrases. Things like therefore, however, moreover, as a result, consequently. I'm always talking about those, and I didn't see quite enough of them in this essay. And a very, very easy place to include one is in the sentence where you repeat the topic, where you repeat the argument. It's very easy to say, therefore, I believe, in consequence, I believe, very, very easy. Now, uh, last but not least is her conclusion. Conclusion, uh, she messed it up a little bit. The problem is that she wrote just one really, really long sentence. She did what I wanted. First, she repeated her thesis, and next she summarized her two reasons, but she jammed all that into one sentence. I want two sentences. I want one sentence for the thesis, and then a second sentence for the reasons. I feel that having just a paragraph that consists of one single sentence is a little bit non-standard, and it could get you a penalty uh, in terms of structure from the rating software. So give me two. Follow the sentence. Once again, I linked 
to the template that she can follow. All right, so that is basically an essay that would score 22, maybe 23 points on the TOEFL. Uh, if you have any questions about what you've seen today, leave a comment down below the video. I usually check those every three days and I answer every single question that is posted. As I said before, if you want your essay checked just like this, uh, you can sign up at my website. Literally, I will give you the exact same treatment. Not only that, but I'll send you some emails where we can communicate one-on-one -on -one, and you can just ask me questions directly. That's part of the service. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to leave it at that, but thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share the video, uh, tell me what you think, and uh, all of that great stuff that helps the old social media profile. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye.